Hi everybody, it's Geordie from Geordie's Cards. Thank you so much for joining me today. We are going to be creating this cute little die cut card um, based on the Lawn Fanatics current challenge, which is um, a movie book or a song. And I chose The Secret Garden. Um, so I started out with the picket fence border die and I wanted to create a little gate, but my gate needed to be bigger than the one in um, the die set. So I did some partial die cutting. I cut the very top of the gate just to um, just below that first kind of um, fret, I guess that goes across. So you can see I'm just lining up my plates. Once I'd done that, I took my ruler and my craft knife and I just continued the, um, the cut lines further down so that they went further down the, the gate, if that makes sense. <laughs> and then once I'd done that, I partially die cut the bottom of the gate. And so you can see I'm getting my cutting plates out again and I'm just going to cut the bottom. Then all I had to do was use my craft knife to join up the lines, make sure everything was cut through. And then I had my gate. So it actually turned out really well. I was a little bit unsure as to whether this would work or not, but um, it did. So I was really happy with that. So you can see I'm just using my craft knife just to tidy up, um, just to cut through the parts that haven't been cut all the way through and um, make sure that everything is completely detached from the card stock that I used. And actually I used, I should say, used Lawn Fawn um, white uh, wood grain card stock. So you can see just comparing the different sizes. So that's the original die there and then that's the size of my fence, my little gate. Then I took my brick stencil and some chili pepper card stock uh, I actually used the stencil on my last card. I'm using chili pepper ink as well. Last time I used a brown ink, but I decided to go with chili pepper ink. It's tone on tone look. So I'm hoping that it will just give the bricks a slightly darker look. Um, and I do like the way this turned out actually. I think I like it better than using the brown in all honesty. It's a little bit more subtle and I really liked it. So I'm literally just pouncing that ink on through the stencil, just making sure to get a really nice, good coverage. It's quite a juicy ink pad, so it worked quite nicely. And because my stencil is a little bit small, I just had to move it across and do the other side. I'm not going all the way to the top of my cardstock because I literally only want it to be the same height as my little, my little gate. Um, so I don't need to do all the way up and you can see I'm just measuring. I did decide to do it a little bit further up because I did want to add kind of like a plinth to the top of my garden fence. So I made it a little bit taller so that I could have some room to trim off a piece. So now I've got a piece of Bristol Smooth cardstock cut to five and a half by four and a quarter inches. And I am using the Lawn Fawn Cloudy stencil. This is something that I recently got and I'm using Speckled Egg Distress Oxide ink. And I'm just going to ink blend some clouds onto my background panel. Um, I wanted a, quite a nice subtle color in the background and I thought this one was perfect. It's a really pretty um, kind of greenish blue, um, very soft and I really liked it. I didn't want the background to be the star of the show. I wanted the the foreground to be so this was just a nice way of doing it subtly and then I was checking the height um, I wasn't going to do all the way down but I decided that I would just because that little fence that little gate has some um, openings in it and I wasn't sure how much you'd be able to see through those openings so I decided to do the whole card panel um, and ink bend all the way down and then just add a little bit of ink to the bottom so it didn't look so stark white I then took a little piece of um, a die cut grass. I just cut from some scrap cardstock that I had and I'm just inking on with some Lucky Clover Distress Oxide ink just to add a little bit of uh, contrast I suppose to make it look a little nice and I like the Lucky Clover with this kind of yellowish green colour. I think it looks really nice. So now I'm just working out how high my brick wall needs to be so I'm just using my pencil to mark that then I'm gonna get my paper trimmer out and I'm gonna trim that off. And I kind of eyeballed it initially and then I thought, you know what, no, <laughs> I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna press it all the way up to the top of the um, 
the trimmer and make sure that they get a, a decent cut. So that's what I did in the end, I turned it around and made sure it was all nice and straight. So there's my brick wall. I'm gonna do some bits and pieces to this as well. So first of all, I'm gonna trim another little piece, like I said, to make a kind of plinth to go on the top of my brick wall. And then I'm going to look at where my little fence is gonna go. Now, I didn't want it completely centered. I did kind of move it slightly to the side. Uh, I just thought that added a little bit more interest. And then I'm just gonna use, I'm actually gonna use a ruler to line that up um, just to make sure, because what I wanna do is I wanna cut it, but I have kind of brick wall on either side of my little gate. Uh, so that was the idea behind that. So I'm just making some pencil marks and I'm gonna trim that down again with my trimmer. And yeah, I think it all turned out quite nicely. I had um, kind of this idea came to me um, one night and I just thought, oh, I could really do with making this secret garden um, for the Lawn Phonetics Challenge. And I had some really good ideas. And I think actually it's another one that's kind of turned out quite nicely for me. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Um, but this was an extra challenge for me as well because it was done with all die cuts. And I don't normally make cards from just die cuts. I normally do some stamping and coloring, but this was all die cuts. So it was a little bit different for me. So you can see I'm just lining up where everything's gonna go. And now I'm gonna add some foam tape to the top of my brick walls. And I'm gonna add that kind of little plinth piece, I don't know what else to call it, on top. So I wanted to add a bit of dimension so that it's not sat right against the wall. So I'm just gonna trim that down and I'm gonna do the same with the other little piece. And just use some foam tape to pop it up a little bit um, from the wall. So I think, well, the brick walls that I've kind of seen have that kind of top part on it. Um, and yeah, I just that's the kind of look I was going for. So I'm just making sure everything fits in nicely and I am happy with that. And what I did, I went ahead and I put foam tape onto the back of um, the brick wall and the back of the um, little gate. And then I just glued the grass down directly on top of that. So here I've got the mushroom house die and I'm gonna use the little lock um, from that and also the flowers. And then this is the center picture window die. I'm gonna use the little bird from that. And I pulled out a few more sets. This is the um, shadow box card park add-on and I'm gonna use the tree from that. I'm just gonna do some partial die cutting of the tree. I'm just gonna top, uh, cut the top part of the tree and then the kind of the leaves part. And yeah, the flowers from the mushroom house. Um, and I'm going to use, this is the uh, tropical leaves backdrop. So I'm gonna use those kind of vines and some of the flowers from that one. And also from the stitched strawberry frame, I'm gonna use the leaves and the flowers. So a whole bunch of <laughs> different dyes. Oh yeah, also I used the, um, uh, what was this one? The Magic Iris Birdhouse add-on. So I used the leaves from that one. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of um, Distress Oxide ink to do some ink blending. So on my bird, I want him to look like a robin. So I'm using um, Fired Brick, I think it is, Distress Oxide ink. And then I'm going back in with my Lucky Clover Distress Oxide ink, just to ink blend um, the bottoms of the trees. So it makes them look a little bit darker at the bottom. Um, and just to add a little bit of contrast. I'm not doing ink blending on everything. Some of the die cuts are very, very small. Um, so I'm just kind of on the bigger pieces. I'm using a little bit of Distress Oxide ink to, to add a little bit of contrast and color. So I went ahead off camera, I went ahead and assembled some of my flowers and I um, then I'm just adding a little bit of ink to some of the larger pieces, the larger leaves. So um, for some of them, I, I kind of layered um, a couple of the flower shapes together to create a kind of more fuller flower, if that makes sense. Um, others I just kept quite simple um, and I'm just kind of putting everything together and um, I've got everything kind of stacked off to the side that you can see my little pile. So I used a couple of different colored greens. Um, these are just some scraps that I had in my um, stash 
This is rustic wilderness distress oxide and I'm just going in for the darker pieces. I'm using this rustic wilderness. Uh, just to add a little bit of depth to those leaves. Um, but it's fairly simple, you know, I'm not doing anything fancy, just kind of looking and seeing where I can add a little bit of ink to make it little, look a little bit contrasted and a little bit different. Um, yeah, so I, I just, I die cut quite a lot, quite a lot of flowers, quite a lot of leaves, quite a lot of vines. I wanted my garden to look quite um, full and although, yeah, you're not going to see most of the garden because it's you kind of on the outside looking towards the, the wall that surrounds the garden. Um, I wanted it to look overgrown and bushy and yeah, just like it is in the story. So I started out with my trees and you can see there my trees. I've, so what I did, I die cut the tops, just partially die cut the top of the trees. And then I just used my craft knife to continue the kind of trunks further down so that they were long enough to tuck behind my brick wall, which is the look that I really wanted. So I'm just adding those directly onto the background panel with some glue and they're going to kind of tuck behind the wall. So it looks like they're growing up from behind the wall. Um, and that's that's kind of the look I was going for. So I really like these trees. I think they add a nice kind of look to a lot of different cards. I like the way that kind of frame the outside of the card. So just using my Tonic Craft Tacky Glue to adhere these to the card base and just tucking them in kind of behind that little brick wall. So it makes it look like they're growing behind it. So once I've done that, I then went ahead and took some of the flowers and, um, oh sorry, I started with the lock. So obviously the garden and the story is locked up and the children find the key for it. So I wanted to add a little lock to my, um, to my fence. <laughs> so I've put that on there, so I've added that first. And then I'm just going to start placing things around and kind of trying to make sure that everything fits in. I've put these kind of little tulip types of flowers, I've, I've put them all along the outside of the wall, so up against the wall. Um, I've used some bigger ones and some of the smaller ones, and I've actually left a couple just as buds, so I haven't put any flowers on top of them. Just to kind of make it look a bit different, and yeah, kind of like the way it looked. So I'm just placing these down to make sure I'm happy with where they are. And then I go ahead and using my tweezers to help me, I'm going to add some liquid glue and I'm going to stick them directly onto the panel. So once I've got them all placed down, it's easy enough just to pick them back up again with my little tweezers and pop the glue on. And I went ahead and I did that for all of these and I kind of stopped, stopped recording now and <laughs> they're all stuck down now. So now it's time to kind of figure out where my other part's going to go. So these bigger kind of vines, these are from the strawberry frame die. Um, I wanted them to kind of look like almost like brambles climbing over the fence. And then we've got some vines which I wanted to look like they were kind of peeking out from behind the fence and the flowers, the bigger flowers. So these ones are the ones where I've kind of added two flowers together to create a um, fuller kind of bloom. So I decided to have them um, around the the gate so it looked like they were kind of climbing through the gate almost um, from the inside of the garden and to the outside. So popping them all on, um, just playing with placement, trying to make sure that I get everything in the right place and I'm starting with uh, the kind of the leaves and the vines first and then all the other little flowers I will add on afterwards. So I just wanted to make sure I had all of these in the right place. Once I was happy with that, I went ahead and stuck those down. I did that off camera. And now I'm moving on to my little Robin. So I'm adding some foam squares. I'm actually adding two foam squares to him because I want him to sit on top of my, um, my fence. So there he is, he's sitting on top of the fence. And now it's time to add the flowers. So the white flowers I wanted to add to these kind of vines, these kind of brambly looking vines, which come from the strawberry dye. Um, and so I played around with those um, and just, I just, as I say, just pop them down first, didn't glue them down straight away. I just wanted to play around with placement first. And now I'm taking some of the other colored flowers and popping them onto the other vines and leaves. 
and just trying to make it look nice and full um, and like a real kind of wild cottage garden. That was the kind of look I was getting for. So just playing around with where everything's gonna go. And once I'm happy, again, I just used my liquid glue and I just added a little dab of glue to the back of the flowers and then attached them on. And here I've got the new Lawn Fawn Clear Glaze and I'm just gonna add a dab of clear glaze to the center of each of the flowers. I just wanted to add a little bit of interest, a little bit of shine. Um, didn't really wanna use any sequins or anything like this and this is a new purchase for me. I got it with the new release so I decided that I'd try it out. And it was just really easy to use because it's in the little tube, I really like it. You can just add a little dab onto the center of the flowers, as I say, just to create a little bit of interest. So I was really happy um, with how this turned out. And I, I found the tube really, really easy to use. I really like that. So finally, I need to think about my sentiment. So I found this little scripty hello. Uh, this comes actually from the Magic Color Slider die. Um, and I really like this little die. So what I did was I went ahead and I cut it from the two pinks that I used for the flowers. So again, these are scraps. I think this one's ballet slippers. Um, this is the Lawn Fawn cardstock. The darker pink, I'm not sure, was just a scrap that I had in my scrap box. Um, I try and use up as much of the scraps as possible. And then what I did was added a little bit of liquid glue to the back of the lighter pink one and I tried to kind of layer it over the darker pink so that it had a little bit of a shadow. Now these are very, this is a very fine, very thin die cut. So it wasn't as easy as I hoped, but I think it turned out quite well in the end. I kind of had to move it around a little bit, but that's the beauty of using liquid glue. You can kind of move it a little bit to get it right. And then once I was happy, I just um, decided on the placement, which was kind of in the center. I liked how the flowers and the trees were kind of framing that bit in the middle where you could highlight the sentiment. So again, just added some little dots of glue all over the back and then just pop that right down into the center of the card until I had it just right. Excuse the sirens going past <laughs> in the city at the moment, so it's a little bit of noise going on outside. But there we go. So um, once I'd done that, I used my clear glaze again to go over the sentiment. Again, I just wanted to add a little bit of shine, a little bit of dimension, a little bit of something extra uh, to make it stand out. And I think it turned out nice. The, um, the glaze was, it's quite a fine tip nozzle, so it was okay. It was quite good to use. I did kind of I don't know, blotch it out a little bit. So I used my tweezers to fix that up. But other than that, it was quite easy to use. So there we are, that's the card panel complete. Now all that's left to do is to add it to a card base. So I used some vanilla malt cardstock from Lawn Fawn and I cut it to a standard size card base. And um, I'm just using some um, tape runner to go around the edges. Um, ready because I hadn't actually let <laughs> I hadn't let the clear gate glaze dry yet so I wanted to be a bit careful that I didn't kind of plop my uh, card base uh, down the wrong way so there we are just attaching that on and it's complete and I'm fairly happy with how that turned out I think it um, worked out quite nicely my first time I think it's my first time using just die cuts on a card and yeah, quite happy with that. I think it's quite um, quite a fun little card and I really enjoyed playing on with the Lawn Phonetics Challenge. So if you haven't played, have a go. The Lawn Phonetics website is, um, if you just search up Lawn Phonetics, you should find it online and it's a lot of fun. Um, I hope you'll have a go at joining and thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this card. Please give me a thumbs up, uh, leave a comment or subscribe to my channel.